Good evening, VB Nation. My name is Ryan. Welcome to the channel, especially if you're new, especially if this is your first time watching one of these Vector Best videos. Now, here my goal is always just to get you on the right side of the market, educate you a little bit so that way you can make better decisions. Tonight, highly anticipated video here. It's about NVIDIA, but more importantly, since after the split, finally the options become more affordable, you know, the little guy, we can jump in there, we actually start playing these options because, you know, 1200 bucks, the options were crazy, the premiums were out of this world, but now they're in with the arm's reach. So tonight's video, we're just gonna go over NVIDIA's options. I'm gonna give you a couple strategies, um, you know, swing trading to leaps to hedging your position, things of that nature. You know, if you're new to this, I'll be honest, I'm not gonna go over the definitions of, you know, strike prices, expirations, things like that. If you are brand new to options, great resource, just go to YouTube, type in Vector Vest Options. You'll see here a lot of videos did pop up. You could do options for beginners, covered calls. Now that I've shown you a great free resource, if you're new to options, definitely stick around and watch this video as it will give you some ideas, get the wheels turning. You know, I don't know how long this video is going to be because it's options. They are a little bit more complicated than just the average stock, but I'll always try to keep these videos under 10 minutes so that way I don't lose your attention. Now, if this is something that you're interested in, stick around and let's get started. Now you'll notice behind me, it looks a little different. This is Options Pro. If you're a VectorVest subscriber, you could definitely call support, go to our website, check it out. You know, we got videos on Options Pro if it's something that you're interested in. Otherwise, this will be how I do my examples this evening. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is how to properly value an option. That's right, options can be overvalued or undervalued. The two big things to look out here is implied volatility compared to historic volatility. You know, you can find these items in most brokerages. They will have, I don't know if they'll be as neatly displayed as this one is about to be. Now, once you compare these two items here, for undervalued options, you want implied volatility to be less than historical. If options are overvalued, typically you'll see that implied volatility will be greater than the historical volatility. So that's just how you get a sense if you're actually even getting a good deal on these options, right? Now, if you're the buyer of an options, you want them to be undervalued, right? If you are the seller of options, you want them to be overvalued. So that way you're collecting more premiums. So once I hit apply down here, now once applied, you do see the overpriced, underpriced. If it's in the blue, that means that the option is typically being overpriced. If it's in the red or below that oscillation point of zero, it means that you're getting a good deal on these options. You can see right now the premiums are in the buyer's favor. So if you're a seller right now, you probably notice you're not collecting as much premium. But again, there was just a stock split. Everyone's getting adjusted to these new prices. That's the main reason why I want to start off this way, you know, just explaining how to look for, you know, over or underpriced options, because whether you're the buyer or the seller, this is what you want to pay attention to, to see if you're getting a good deal in either position. Now we do see that these options are currently undervalued right now. So the favor is more to the buyer at this time. First up on the strategy list is a covered call. This is a way to hedge your position. So if you own at least 100 shares, you know, to sell an option contract, you have to own 100 shares of that position. Well, if you don't wanna do it naked, but that being said here in this option chain, we're buying 100 shares of Nvidia and we're selling one call against it. If we're doing this at the same time, it is a buy right. If you already own the underlying asset or own Nvidia, this would be considered a cover call. Now that being said, I am aiming for the July 19th date. Anytime I am the seller, I want to make sure that I put the odds in my favor. So I want to give the buyer less time to be correct. Now, if you're a member of the URS or Ron's coaching group here, you know, for the seller, they typically go for expirations within 30 to 45 days. We got July 19th, so that's just over 30 days and I have the strike price of 140. Now you might be asking yourself, Ryan, how did you come up with that strike price of 140? Right here, you see the blue, that is a probability cone. It just looks at standard deviations and gives you a realistic chance of price movement within that time period. If you see the green lines going up and down, that's just the different expirations. I've got the green line right now on July 19th, the expiration that I chose. And you can see right here, sitting at around 140, this is in the upper echelon of this probability. Now, the further you go up in the strike price, the less premium you're going to collect because the less probability for the buyer, right? So I try to aim for the top end of this probability cone here. You see 140, 
to 150 is the top of this cone here. Anything outside of 150, very unlikely to get above there, statistically speaking. However, you know, nothing is impossible. So you wanna aim for the upper echelon of this range here. Now, it's just a matter of personal risk, you know, and greed on depending on how much premium you want to collect. So for this example right here, we see we're collecting $315 worth of premium just by selling this call here. And if the stock does go up to 140 bucks, well, it'll just get called away from you. Trading right now at $128.80, that's about $11 away. So 11 times 100, that's $1,100 in profit from, you know, 129, just for simple math, to 140 on 100 shares, right? So we can see it went up to 315. So this is a credit. This would be added to your brokerage account for selling this contract to a buyer. So you would actually get paid to put insurance on your NVIDIA stock. Now covered calls, these kind of strategies are typically used by individuals that don't want to sell the underlying asset, but just hedge their position or a simple income strategy for a lot of retirees. All right, next up, we're gonna discuss leaps. I know those are very popular. A lot of people wanna buy leaps on video because they see the potential of the company for the long haul here. Now, when you buy leaps, just a couple of things I've picked up along, you know, from Ron and John and the URS course here. I've got two expirations here. I've got a 90 day DTE. Well, the closest one I could find, 99 days at September 20th. And then down below, I do have a leap here, the first one coming at June 20th, 372 days till expiration. Now in the courses they teach, they do prefer a 90 day DTE over just buying a leap. The reason why, the risk to reward ratio. They would rather do four diagonals at 90 day DTEs each of those times to equal a year. Now just a couple things to consider when buying leaps and options in general here, the further you go out from the strike price and the lower the expiration, the cheaper the option typically is. That being said here, we can see that the 90 day DTE, we've got the 127 strike. So right at the money, slightly in the money right now, we can see that's going for $14.20. You multiply that by 100, you're looking at about $1,400 right now. We take a look at the June 20th, 2025, that same strike price here comes in at $2,800.15. So you're paying for a lot of extra time. So that being said, me personally, I'd rather do a 90 day DTE and just roll it out, you know? So you would buy, for example, the 127 strike, 90 days out being September 20th. Once you get closer, once you hit your profit or loss objective, you know, it's just like buying a stock. You wanna be able to manage the trade. You wanna have a plan in place before buying one of these. You know, as I get closer to that September 20th, like I was saying before, you know, unless you hit, you know, one of those profit or loss objectives, you would simply just sell the option and replace it with another 90 day DTE going further out. So that's commonly called a rollover with these options. Now, if you're going to do this strategy, you do want to try to stick in the money at the money or slightly out of the money. I know it is tempting to get further out of the money here, because they do get cheaper and cheaper, especially for the leaps. You know, if you got a smaller account, I've done it myself, saving a couple dollars, but some of the percentages are not in your favor. First of all, the delta will start to drop off, along with the break even and the in the money percentages will start to drop as well. So they are cheaper, but they're less likely to hit. The probability is becoming less likely in your favor. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna buy a leap or 90 day DTE call options and just roll them out. So for an example, we're just gonna look at price action of Nvidia over the last six months here. So for the covered call, right? Price action started to roll over here. If I use a dateline, right around March 27th, we can see price action start to pull back. So this is where a covered call can come in handy. If you don't wanna sell the underlying asset being Nvidia, but you wanna put some insurance on it or you know collect some premiums, you know, as some kind of income strategy, doing so, not a bad idea. So here would be about the time you'd wanna start putting some insurance coverage, you know, seeing the stock start to roll over here. Of course, you'd collect your premium, especially with the three cross below the eight day there. We're seeing the stock pull back, price action below that 20 day exponential. So right around here, good time to hedge, right? So at some point you're gonna to wanna to take profits. Again, that's, you know, completely up to you. You would have to manage the trade, have some kind of profit loss insight. 
But definitely by here, once we're seeing the moving averages, you know, get in our favor and price action gets back above that 20 day exponential moving average, we don't want to be too greedy because then you're just giving all that profit back from the insurance from the covered call. And currently, if we look here, we see price action still on the rise, still above three day exponential moving average. So I'm not necessarily seeing a need to go out and sell the calls right this second, even though the market's pulling back, Nvidia is going against the market right now, especially being one of the hottest stock at this time. Far as the rollover strategy, you know, whether it's a leap or DTE, same kind of concept, right? If you're in a winning trade from say January 8th, you don't want to give that price back. So you see price action hit the 20 day exponential moving average. So this would have been my warning sign. If you sold it, not the worst idea, just because you see the stock pulling back, you don't want the trade to become emotional. However, look, the next day, it goes right back above so you can buy back in. That's right, you don't have to get emotionally attached to these options, even leap options. Yeah, you might just lengthen the moving averages so that way you're not in and out as much. But the same concept here between the 90 day and the leap option, just rolling them over, looking at simple things such as moving averages. You know, once you overcomplicate things, you're just looking to either buy or sell something that you probably shouldn't be getting into in the first place. You're literally adding more indicators to the chart to convince yourself of something. For my third option strategy here, we're going to talk spreads. In particular, we're going to do a bull put spread. The one I have up here is the July 19th. Both expirations here, we're going to be buying one put and selling one put to get this. Now the strike price on the buy is $130 while the sell is 132. But what I like about this strategy here is if you see, we start off with the credit. So once again, we're getting paid to play. You see that the max risk here is $87 and 50 cents while the max profit is about $110. But what I really like about this trade, the stock only has to get up above $131 to really start making some money. And currently sitting at $129 and with momentum behind Nvidia right now, I see that as a very likely opportunity and a quick trade to where you start off making money. All right, VB Nation, you know, I said a lot today. If you had to rewind this, you know, really understand the information because it's options, I'm not surprised. I remember having to do this quite a bit starting out trading options. So, you know, don't be embarrassed on it. Don't give up on options if you are just starting out. Now, there are some things I didn't cover in this video. Time decay, delta, a lot of other factors. So if you're new to options, if you've never bought options before, you know, definitely check out the YouTube resource I showed you earlier. We do have courses on it. You know, I'm not here to sell you anything, but the value is there. I will tell you, I've made a lot of money in options and I've also taken some hefty losses. That's why you have to manage these trades just like a stock. Don't let them become emotional. Now, I know this video is a lot different. I know it's a little bit longer than usual. If you stuck to the end, you found this video very informative to kind of help you, you know, get the gears a turn in when it comes to buying some options now that they're much more affordable on Nvidia, hit that like button. I may do this type of video again on option strategies. If this is something that you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way I can keep you updated going forward.